Now we welcome each one to the weekly worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May God bless all those who are here in this assembly as well as our weekly television and our internet viewers. We thank God for this privilege to worship with all of our fellow believers. We are blessed to have this privilege to join with you in praise and worship of our Lord. So for the call to worship this morning, let's turn in our hymnals to number 398 as we stand and sing together, My Jesus, I Love Thee. My Jesus, I love thee, I know thou art mine, for thee all the follies of sin I resign, my gracious Redeemer, my Savior. thanking you, Lord, now for another beautiful morning. Another day, Lord, that has been set aside that we come to worship and to praise you. Father, we thank you for this time, and Lord, we just come thanking you for each home that is represented here this morning. Lord, we just feel that each and every one will leave this place knowing and feeling that it was good to be in God's house and in your presence. Lord, be with all of our troubled, our sick and bereaved, and most of all, Lord, be with our lost. So now let's just open our minds and open our hearts for the message that you are about to receive. And for all these things, we'll give you the thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lee. See, it's just a joy. 
to be in God's house this morning. It's good to see you. And uh, just to gather together with God's family and God's people and be in his house. Let me just mention a couple of things. I think we need to congratulate Amy this morning. You received one of the few people in our area that received national certification as a teacher. So give her a round of applause this morning. Also be much in prayer for Brother Alfred Golding and his family. Ms. Morris passed away and uh, the viewing is today at Norris Funeral Home from 1.30 to 2.30 over at Norris, 1.30, 2.30. So if you can, please go by and, and meet with the family and then the, there will be a graveside service at three o'clock at Roselawn. But uh, 1.30 to 2.30, drop by uh, Norris Funeral Home if you can and, uh, and uh, talk with the family and show them their love. Sister Pat is still at uh, Baptist Hospital. There's a reason she's not on the piano this morning. And so pray much for her that her pain will subside <coughs> and she'll be able to come home maybe tomorrow. And uh, let's continue to pray that the biopsies will be negative and everything will be good there that they went in and done. But she did have some complication after that surgery on Thursday. And uh, so pray for her as that God would strengthen her. Sister Pam Bryant goes in the morning for a series of tests, so pray for her as she's going through that. And Sister Barbara Spitzer has now uh, been admitted to Blue Ridge Nursing Home in room 207. Uh, and uh, she, if you go by to see her, go by if you can, but if you be aware that she uh, may not know who you are and may not recognize you. And uh, uh, so the, uh, the, the cancer now, her daughter-in-law says, has affected her brain. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but if you do get a chance, go by and, uh, and see her and visit with her. But uh, let's pray much for her and as well as the family. But again, it's good to be in God's house today. I hope we come to <coughs> praise and honor him. I hope that's the reason we're here, is to worship him in spirit and in truth. If so, we can leave saying it's been good to be in God's house. Let's enjoy the choir as they come to sing, Mansion Over the Hilltop. Amen.
sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters drifted me down safe praises sing love so mighty and so true marriage my soul's blessed song faithful loving service to to him belong sing it love lifted me love lifted me oh and nothing else could help Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Listen, souls in danger, look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He, your Savior, wants to be the same today. Love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, Christ lifted me. Shackled by a heavy burden Meet a load of guilt and shame Then the hand of Jesus touched me And now I am no longer the same he touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the Lord that flood my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me, and made Since I met this blessed Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout it till eternity. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. 
The thief cometh not but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, Seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scatters the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and I am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The other sheep, and, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and the power to take it again. This commandment have I received from my Father. May we pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful that we have the privilege of assembling once again in your house. And Lord, what a blessing it has been to be in your house already today. Father, Lord, we've heard the singing as we lifted our voices in praise to you. Father, Lord, we have heard songs of Zion and songs of honoring our Savior and songs that talk about what you've done for us. And so, Father, we're excited already. Then, Father, Lord, we look into the Word of God and we find much more excitement and much more that we look to hearing from you this morning. May Holy Spirit direct the words that are said. Father, direct this vessel. May I say only those things that are needful, those things that you would have said, nothing more, nothing less. May the Church of the Living God, the Church of the Redeemed, be, uh, Father, Lord, uh, be encouraged and, Father, be lifted up. May saints rejoice. And if there's any that's lost today, may they come to know Christ as their Savior. We'll, we'll give you praise, honor, and glory in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Last week, we began a series of three messages out of John 10, this being the second. And last week, we looked at the words and the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ as it came from his heart and off of his lips. We were blessed to listen as Christ introduced us to the sheepfold, the church. As he introduced us to himself, the door of entrance. As he introduced us to Holy Spirit, the porter who opens the door to those who will believe. And to his under-shepherd, the pastor, and the duties that is his to provide for the sheepfold. Today we are privileged to sit at his feet once more. As Christ introduces us to himself, the good shepherd. The good shepherd. And we'll find also it's, he is listed as the great shepherd in the word of God. The Lord Jesus Christ is the good and perfect shepherd. All that ever came before him or in his stead, or yet that say they come in his name afterwards, the word of God says that they are simply thieves and robbers. They are hirelings. They care not for God's sheep. May I tell you this morning, there is only one good shepherd. His name is Jesus. There's only one good shepherd. His name is Jesus, and he is the only one that can and did lay down his life for his sheep. All the other religions of the world and all the other gods of the world has never died for anybody, much less rose again. Only Jesus is the sheep, good shepherd. So let us this morning take a few minutes and look at the great sweetness and the depths of this precious teaching that Christ has given to us of his sheep and of himself being our good shepherd. We want to mention six or seven things this morning, time permitting. 
First of all, we find that Christ is teaching us that he is the good shepherd because he gave his life for his sheep. Look in verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. You might want to underline that little word giveth. It means a lot. This is, this is perhaps, to me, the most outstanding characteristic of my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, not only is he ready and willing to give his life in defense for the sheep, but he has already gave his life for the sheep. He tells us in verse 18 that he done so because he loved the Father and he obeyed his command. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself, and I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up. This commandment have I received of my Father. You say, Pastor, what is, what is that really saying? It says that the Father asked him to go to Calvary and he obeyed. You see, there, there's some teachings about, about his sacrifice that I can't understand, but I believe. I don't understand the mind of God. How in the, fore, fore, uh, the foreknowledge of God, back before the eons of time, before Christ himself, who stepped out on nothing and spoke into existence all that we have and all that we enjoy, before that time, in the, in the council of the Godhead, it was decided that God loved his creation that was yet to be, that was yet to sin against him, that was yet to turn his, their back on him, that was yet to leave him. He loved him so much that in the council of the Godhead, he looked over at the Son and said, Son, the, these, the creation that we are yet to create will despise us, will turn our back on us, will sin against us, will transgress against us, will fall into iniquity and fall into sin. And you, the only one that can, that can redeem them because you're the only one perfect. So, son, I asked you as the perfect shepherd, as the perfect sheep, as the perfect lamb, as the perfect sacrifice to go to the cross of Calvary, die there a vicarious death on that cross, there give your life's blood, every drop of it, for the sinful men that you and I created that fell into sin, that followed the leadership of Satan. And he looked at his father and says, I will. I don't know what that tells you, but that tells me much about the love of God and the love of the, of the Son. For God so loved the world that, who, that he... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I don't understand why God loved me before I was ever created. I don't understand why God loved us before we ever sinned and followed satanic leadership. I don't understand that God loved us so much that he gave Jesus before we was ever born. But he did because he loved us. We find that Jesus is telling us that he himself is the good shepherd and gave his life for the sheep that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Look in verse 10. The, sheep, the, the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. I, come, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Now it's one thing for us to have life in Christ. In other words, it's one thing for us to be saved from hell and to go to heaven. That's life. That's life. But Christ says, I didn't come that they might just be, have fire insurance, so to speak. I didn't come that they just might be removed from the threat of hell and have a home in heaven. I come that they might live. I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. That they might enjoy living in the this old fleshful body that they have in this world that they have. I'm going to tell you if there's anybody ought to enjoy living it's children of God that's been washed in the blood of Jesus. He says I come that they might not have a mere Christian existence but they would have life and have it more abundantly. Every day with Jesus is a new adventure. Every day of Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Every day with Jesus is is new excitement in the life of a child of God. That's what abundant life is. That's what living abundantly is. Christ is telling us that he, the good shepherd, he's teaching us that he not only died for our redemption, but he died for the resurrection of the sheep. Think about that. Not only did he die for our redemption, but he died that we might live in him. Verse 17 Therefore doth my Father love me, 
because I lay down my life that I might take it again, that I might rise again, that I might be resurrected, that I might bring to those who follow me my sheep everlasting resurrected life. He's the first fruit of the resurrection. All who believe in him are part of that uh, resurrection. He tells us in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 20, listen to this. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant. He's the great shepherd of the sheep because he died and brought to us a blood covenant. What does it mean? Everybody that's washed in the blood is saved. Everybody that washed in the blood has a covenant with the Father. He's our Father. We are His children. Jesus Christ is our Savior, our Redeemer, our Lord. And because He lives, we live. Because He lives, we live. Christ is the Good Shepherd who who gave His life freely for the sheep, and no one demanded it. Look in verse 18 again. And no man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it again. Because he lives, I live. Because he died, I'm alive. Because he rose again, I have resurrection life. But on that day of crucifixion, no man murdered my Savior. He wasn't murdered. He wasn't executed. You see, he he willfully, willfully of his own desire to love and to die for us, his sheep walked into the scourging hall of of that Roman uh, courtyard. He was beaten by that cat of nine tails with 39 stripes. His bones stood up at him. He was marred beyond human recognition according to Isaiah 53. I mean, he began to shed his blood at the Garden of Gethsemane in, in, in saying, I'm be obedient to the command of my Father. He walked up Calvary's mountain. That blood flowed from Gethsemane to Golgotha. And there on that hill, they laid that old cross down. And he willingly laid down, stretched out his hands across that cross, beams of that cross, laid his feet one on top of the other, and says, go ahead I give my life. You don't have to take it. You see, I'm going to tell you this morning that no Roman soldier was guilty of killing my Savior. No Roman soldier was guilty of murdering my Lord. He, di- he died on his own behalf, on our behalf of his own will, and he rose again the third day victorious over death, hell, and the grave that you and I could have life and have it more abundantly and live resurrected life in Jesus Christ. Christ, the good shepherd, says to all who believe in him that they may by the door of entrance himself enter into the sheepfold and return to a right relationship with God. Now it's not that God didn't have a right relationship with us. It's that because of sin we didn't have a right relationship with God. Listen to this in 1 Peter 2, 24 and 25. Who who his own self by our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye are healed. For we were, we were as sheep going astray, but we are now returned to the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Well, glory. It says that he created me and I left him. He created me and I said I don't want him. He created me and I said I'd rather serve self, sin, and Satan than I had my Savior. But my Savior loved me in command of his Father and died for me on the cross of Calvary. He took every sin of mine and every sin of yours and bare them on his own body upon that tree of, of, uh, at Calvary, upon that cross at Calvary, shed his blood that you and I might have remission of all of our sins, brought us back to a right relationship with, uh, with God. And it says that we now are sheep of his sheepfold and we have a right relationship with the shepherd and the bishop of our soul, the Lord Jesus Christ and God his Father. Church, I'm not about to tell you that I can understand why why Christ loved me and why he's done all that he has done for us and made all the preparations that for the future that he has made for us. But I can tell you this, I'm thankful that he is my good and great shepherd, that he loved me in obedience to his Father's command. 
that he willingly laid his life down and, and that he might take it up again, that he who lives victorious, but that we through him who lives victorious might live a victorious life, and that we who were wandering sheep gone astray from the fold was brought back by the love of God, reconciled by the blood of Jesus Christ, entered the sheepfold through the door of forgiveness, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you this morning, if you know that great and good shepherd, it's time that we give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. Secondly, secondly, as we sit at the feet of Christ this morning and listen to his teaching, he teaches us that the sheep hear his voice and they hear the voice of the good shepherd. Look in verse 16. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold, them, I'll, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. Now what's Christ saying? He says that every sheep that follows Christ, they do so because they hear his voice. Matter of fact, let me just say this. You can't follow Jesus if you haven't heard his voice. You're not of his sheepfold if you haven't heard his voice. You say, but preacher, how do I hear the voice of Jesus? I'm glad you asked. I want to tell you. Christ says that his voice is heard through and by his word and the preaching of it. The only way you ever hear Jesus is through the preaching of the word of God. Listen at Paul writes to the Romans in, 10, in, in chapter 10, verse 13 through 17. And for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on them whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the, are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who hath believed our report? So faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I want to tell you this morning, if you want to follow Jesus, hear his word. If you want to be saved, hear his word. If you're not saved, you need to listen and hear his word and obey his voice and become part of the sheepfold. Paul writes to the church at Corinth and says this in 1 Corinthians 1.21. For after that the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew him not, but it pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. I want to tell you, I do not apologize, will not apologize for preaching the word of God. I love to teach it, but I love some old-fashioned Holy Ghost anointed, powerful preaching from, from heaven above through the Word of God. Why? That's what I got saved under. And if you come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're saved because somebody preached the Word of God to you. We need more people to preach the Word of God. Christ, the Good Shepherd's voice, is heard by people all over the world because He died for people all over the world. Listen at 1 John 2, 1 and 2. He says in, the, in our text verse, I have other sheep that are out of this fold, some yet to hear this voice. Listen to this. My little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate, a lawyer with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation for our sins, the price paid for our sins, and not for ours only but also for the sins of the world. You say, who can come to Jesus? Everybody. Amen. Who can enter the sheepfold? Everybody. Who can have eternal life, abundant life, everlasting life? Everybody. Well, what they have to do? Hear his voice, believe, and follow. Because he's paid the price for our sins. Church, I'm glad. That Jesus Christ, my good, my great shepherd, is teaching us that he included you and I and all of mankind, all of mankind, all people in all places of all society. Doesn't matter what color your skin is. Doesn't matter where you was raised, what part of the continent, what part of the globe. It doesn't ma matter who you come from. It doesn't matter your standing in society. It doesn't matter your wealth or, or your poverty. It doesn't matter your education, your illiteracy. It doesn't matter anything except you hear the word of God, you believe Christ, and you follow him. Amen. My friends, this morning, if you've heard the voice of the good shepherd and you're following him, give him praise and glory. Thirdly, 
As we sit at the feet of Christ, Christ is teaching us that he, the good shepherd, knows his sheep. Look in verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep. Oh, that, that ought to make us just shout. Oh, he knows us. Now listen how he knows us. Christ knows us personally. Personally. He knows me. He knows you. He knows us all individually. Individually. Paul writes to the, Corinth, to the church at Corinth in, in 1 Corinthians 8, 3, if any man, if, but if any man love God, the same is known of him. If you love God, God loves you. But we love God because he first loved us. And God knows who we are. Listen to this. Listen, listen to this promise. In 2 Timothy 2, 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Wow. The Lord knoweth them individually that are his. If you are his, he knows you. You have a personal relationship with him. He is your father. You are his child. He treats you as way he would treat his all of his children individually and in love. And it says this in that same verse. And let every one that nameth the name of Jesus depart from iniquity. You say, preacher, what does that say? Everybody that's known of God lives for him. Oh, not maybe. You see, the word of God says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Not maybe, not hope so. Maybe if they have time, I'm going to tell you this morning, if the Father knows you, you live for him, you love him. Everything that you do is because of him and because he knows you. Listen to this. He knows their name. He knows their nature. And he knows our need. Oh, he knows who my name is. I've got a new name written down in glory. I don't know what it is yet, but he knows what it is. You see, he knows where I am. Regardless, he knows where I am all the time. I'm never lost because he's with me. But he knows our need. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 8, Christ says, For your Father knoweth what things you have need of. When you need it, huh, before you even asked. He knows our need. He knows our need. Every one of our needs, he knows. Christ, the good shepherd, is busy finding those that go astray. Now, every now and then, some of us, we get a little hard-headed. Do you understand what I'm saying? We get a little careless, you know. We, we don't walk after his footsteps the way we should. I'm going to tell you, every sheep in his fold, he knows personally. And if he has to, he'll go find you, put you on his shoulders, and bring you back. Now, there's something that happens in the meanwhile. But listen at Matthew chapter 18 and verse 12. How think thee, if any man have a hundred sheep, and one of them be, one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine safely in the sheepfold, by the way, and go into the mountains and seek, seek him that is gone astray? I'm going to tell you, if you're part of his sheep, he knows you and if you're wandering away from him he knows you and watch out chastening day is coming you see what is happening listen to Paul writes in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6 for whom the Lord loveth he chastens and scourges every son whom he receiveth I'm going to tell you this morning if you're not chastened by Christ every now and then if you're not whipped every now and then by the word of God if Holy Spirit doesn't ring your bells and slap you upside the face every now and then when you begin to get a little bit out of his will you're not his child because he doesn't chasten those that aren't his but I'm so thankful that he knows us and he loves us and he's not going to let us wander astray and he's not going to let us go our own way because he loves every one of his and he chastens that means he whips he brings back in line he disciplines every one of his children you say God's never done that to me get saved and he will come to Jesus and he will you see, church, I'm glad that, that Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, knows every one of his sheep personally and deals with us in love. And if you are known by the great shepherd, give him praise and glory. Amen. Fourthly, as we sit at the feet of Jesus, Jesus is teaching us that his sheep knows the good shepherd. Now we, we're known of him. And he says now we know him. Look in verse 14. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I'm known of mine. If you're his, you know him. 
What this is saying is there's a relationship between the good shepherd and his sheep that is likened to the relationship of the father and the son. Look in verse 15. A relationship likened to the father and the son. As the father know me, even so I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. He says, my sheep know me because I know them. And they live for me. And they love me so much that they will die for me. What a relationship. Now he's never asked us to die for him, but we who love him would die for him if need be. Because he died for us. He says this. He says the relationship that I have with the sheep as being their, their, their good shepherd is like the relationship I have with my father. My father loves me and I love my father. And I will do whatever he asked. And I will follow whatever command he has. And he commanded me to lay down my life for the sheep. And I've done so. And I'm going to tell you this morning, children of God, sheep of his foe, if you know Jesus Christ, you'll live for him. And you'll live for him and you'll die for him. We find over in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the great, the great uh, hall of faith, those people died in faith having not received the promise. I'm going to tell you, if faith is good enough to live by, it's good enough to die by. And I'm going to live by faith until Jesus takes me out of this world and I'll die singing hallelujah, praise the Lord, because he loved me and gave himself for me. We know him and we love him. And it is a relationship of love. He, he writes to us in 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come, listen to this, and has given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. And we are in Him that is true, even in, in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God in eternal life. You know why you know Him? Because He lives within you and you in Him. You are one. You are one with the Father. You are one with the Son. Paul writes to young Timothy in 1-2 of 2 Timothy, For this cause I have also suffered these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed. I'm not embarrassed. For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. We know him because he loved us and gave himself for us. And we give ourselves back to him. You say, what was Apostle Paul saying as he wrote this, one of the last letters that he wrote? He says, listen, I know whom I have believed, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus. And I know him so well that I live within him and he's in me. And I have committed my everything to him. If you've not committed your everything to him, then you don't know him. If you know him, you've given him everything of your life. And this is eternal life, that they might know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. John 17, 3. Church, wow. I'm glad that the sheep know the good shepherd personally and, in rejoice, and rejoice in a great relationship of deep love with that good shepherd. If you're in love with the shepherd and you know him, give him praise and glory. Fifthly, as we said at the feet of Jesus this morning, Christ is teaching us that sheep are owned by the good shepherd. That his sheep are owned by the good shepherd. Look in verse 12. But he that is a hireling and, and not the shepherd, whose sheep they are not. What Christ is telling us here is that his sheep belong to him and no one else. That no one else. Why? Why do we not even be owned by ourselves because he gave himself for us. We're not owned by ourselves. We're not owned by this world. We're not owned by some preacher. We're not owned by a denomination. We're not owned by religion. We're owned by Jesus. Why? Because the sheep has purchased us. By the, the sheep has been purchased by the blood of the good shepherd. Acts 20 and 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost have made you overseers and feed the flock of God, the sheepfold, which he hath purchased by his own blood. We've been bought. We were on a slave market of sin, being sold to the highest bidder. Jesus steps up and says, he's mine. I purchased him at Calvary. She's mine. I paid her debt at Calvary. They belong to me. No longer to Satan. No longer to self. No longer to sin. We belong to the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. What? Know ye, that your body, that know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, for ye are not of your own. Ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's. Sheep, this, the sheep of the sheepfold, if you know this morning that you are part of his sheepfold, that you don't belong to yourself, that you don't belong to religion, that you don't belong to denomination, that you don't belong to man, but you belong to Jesus because you've been purchased by the blood of the good shepherd, give him praise and glory. Hey, listen to this. It gets gooder and gooder and better and better and sweeter and sweeter. As we said at the feet of Christ this morning, as he's teaching in John 10, Christ teaches us that the sheep are all cared for by the good shepherd. That we are cared for by the good shepherd. Look in verse 13, the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling, careth not for the sheep. Here Christ says that he and he only is the good shepherd and cares for the sheep and gives his sheep warning, such as the wolf that comes in sheep's clothing and the wolf that is Satan, who is the greatest enemy of the sheep. He tells us in 1 Peter 5, 7 through 10, cast all your cares on him. Why? Because he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil is a roaring lion seeking, walking about seeking whom he may devour. I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ says, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and be ready because, you're, you, because you are belong to me, because you are my sheepfold, somebody's going to try to attack you, somebody's going to try to hurt you, but never wonder, child, just cast all those cares on me, because I'm the master of the sea, I'm the door of the sheepfold, I have everything under control, and I'm yours. Christ the Good Shepherd tells us that he supplies the needs that we have as sheep of the sheepfold. In Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, But, but my God... Well, glory, but my God shall supply part of my needs, uh uh-uh, all of of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I'm going to tell you that ought to make any of us shout, that ought to make us rejoice, that ought to make us have a hallelujah spell. Why? Because every time we need something, it's already provided. He knows it before we, we need it. He has it prepared for us, waiting for our needs, and he tells us this, that it'll never go broke. Why? Why will the bank of heaven, why will the warehouse of blessings never goes broke? Because he says this I, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus his heavens warehouse of blessings will never go broke we're enjoying those blessings this morning sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus listen to this Christ also says that the good shepherd empowers, empowers the sheep I love this in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 you ought to know this by heart I can do all things through Christ that strengtheneth me I'm going to tell you you can do anything that God asks you to do why because he gives you the power the courage the strength the ability and the wherewithal to do it without even thinking about it There's nothing you can't do as a child of God, as a sheep in his sheepfold that he asked you to do as we wander through this world, as we beat against the the doors of hell, as we bombard this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we make the devil mad, as we make religion mad, as we tell everybody about Jesus without any reservation or hesitation. I'm going to tell you we can do all things through Christ because he empowers us to do so. Church, I'm glad that we are the sheep of his sheepfold or cared for by the good shepherd. And if you're in his care, knows his care, and lavishing in his love, give him praise and glory. And then let me say this. Christ, as we sit at his feet, teaches us that he, the good shepherd, will gather all the sheep into one fold. Look in verse 16. The other sheep I have, which are not of this foal, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and they shall be one fold and one shepherd. Christ, the good shepherd, has told us, told us that now his sheep are spread around the world. There are people every every tongue, every nation of all tribes, but all of his sheep that have heard his voice being led by Holy Spirit, been baptized into one body, will one day hear the voice of the Good Shepherd as we're told in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 1. When John saw and John looked and he says, And after this I looked and behold the door of heaven was open. And the first voice I heard as it were, were trumpets talking to me which said, Come up hither. One of these days all of us 
who've been to Calvary, who's had the blood of Jesus Christ washed our sins away. And we have been led by the shepherd, the good shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're of his fold and we're in his care. One of these days, as described in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16 through 18, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I'm going to tell you this, dear children of God. As I said earlier, before I was ever born, he loved me. Before I was ever born and become part of his sheepfold, he died for me at the cross of Calvary. And because I have believed, I have heard his voice, the word of God. I have believed what he said. I follow the, the, sheep, the, the shepherd of the sheepfold, the good shepherd, one of these days, and it won't be long. Whether by death or by rapture, it matters not to me. I'm going to hear the voice of Jesus say, enter into the, into the portals of glory. Enter into the joys of the Lord well done thou good and faithful servant but one of these days and it could be this morning that eastern sky is going to split open Jesus Christ himself is going to descend from heaven and we're going to hear him say come up hither and the church of the redeemed is leaving this world church I'm glad that one of these days all the sheep of the good shepherd regardless where they're at this morning regardless where they're residing this morning but we who have a, have a heavenly home of eternity with him, him our heavenly shepherd will live forever in that heavenly sheepfold with the one who loved us and gave himself for us if you're part of his eternal sheepfold looking forward to the day that you leave this world to spend with him give him praise and glory well glory the good shepherd is coming is there any wonder as I close this message is there any wonder that David could write as an under shepherd in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He, the good, good, the good shepherd, maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He, the good shepherd, leadeth me beside the still waters. He, the good shepherd, restoreth my soul. He, the good shepherd, leads me in paths of righteousness for, for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he, for thou, the good shepherd, are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Let me stop right here. I hadn't seen this till just this morning sitting in my office. Only the good shepherd, now listen to this children of God, listen to this sheep of the fold. Only the good shepherd has the rod and the staff, the rod of correction and the staff of comfort. You say, I thought that was the job of the under shepherd. Uh-uh. I take the word of God, preach it to you. He takes it and turns it into the rod of correction and the staff of comfort. He, the good shepherd. You will not find, by the way, check it out. You will not find where the under shepherd carries the rod and the staff, only the good shepherd. Amen. David didn't have one. Thou, prepare, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, the Holy Spirit. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy, grace of God, Amen. shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You say, what does that mean? That we're going to stay here? No, -uh. we dwell in the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord right here. But one of these days, there's coming a day. There's coming a day that throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity, that all of God's sheep will be in one sheepfold, in one place, with one shepherd forever and ever and ever. And we'll enjoy dwelling in the house of the Lord. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Jack and, the Le and Jean coming. May I ask you this question? Is Christ your good shepherd? Are you sheep in his sheepfold? If you are in his sheepfold, how thankful are you for all that he does for us? Maybe you want to come as a sheep kneel at an altar and say thank you for me for all that you do as my good shepherd and dear friend if you're not in his sheepfold you're not his sheep 
Why won't you come today? The shepherd stands with arms open with a heart of love. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Heavenly Father, what a joy it's been to pre preach the word of God today. What a joy it has been to sit at your feet and listen to Christ talk about himself. Talk about all that we have in him and all that he does for us. We, his sheep. Lord, we love you. The good shepherd, I love you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us your sheep. May your sheep respond in this invitation. Maybe they just want to come and say thank you. Maybe they want to come and rejoice. And may any, if there's anybody here that's outside the sheepfold of safety, may they come this morning to the Good Shepherd and become his sheep. In Christ's name, amen. Let's stand. If God's touched your heart, respond according to the leadership of Holy Spirit. Would you come?